In speedrunning, there are multiple categories of world records you can achieve. Some are easy, some are hard, and some are pretty average. Most Minecraft speedrunners will run the category called RSG, also known as Random Seed Glitchless. Some runners even decide to run SSG, or Set Seed Glitchless, or even FSG, Filtered Seed Glitchless. But there's another very interesting subcategory that can be ran on RSG, SSG, or even FSG. This category is known as Half Heart Hardcore, or Triple H for short. And the description of the category is in the name. You pick a category of speedrunning from RSG, SSG to FSG, and then run it in Hardcore mode. But there's even more to it than that. Running Minecraft Hardcore is definitely a challenge, but it's not completely undoable. But that's where Triple H is different. Notice how I said the category was called Half Heart Hardcore? Yep. You have to run in Hardcore mode, but also with half a heart. And while Ninja Brain was running this category, he managed to destroy the world record by not one minute, not two minutes, not three minutes, but over five minutes. As Ninja Brain loads into the world, he spawns right next to a ruined portal. The chest contained a pickaxe, some armor, a fire charge, a piece of flint, and two pieces of obsidian. Wait, there was also a god apple? Getting a god apple anytime is insane, but getting it in this category can help the run out so ridiculously much, but I'll get a bit more into that later. Ninja Brain spots a shipwreck on a nearby island and travels over to it. He gets some wood from the masts of the shipwreck, and because he has such a big knowledge of speedrunning, he knows exactly where to dig down to find the shipwreck loot. The shipwreck chest contains 10 iron ingots and 17 iron nuggets. He then builds back up, crafts a full set of iron tools, a bucket, and a flint and steel. And again, with his knowledge of speedrunning being so big, he knows exactly where to dig down to find the food chest, with this chest containing 46 rotting flesh and 19 wheat. He then crafts a boat, some doors, and some bread, then grabs some extra wood, and then heads off looking for a magma ravine. After about 45 seconds of travelling, he finds a ravine, but it doesn't turn out to be a magma ravine, so he digs around for some lava. He spends about another 30 to 40 seconds digging around for a lava pool and finds some diamonds on the way, which he later crafts into a diamond pickaxe. He does a little bit more digging and ends up finding a lava pool, but has to build a really awkward portal due to the shaping of the lava pool. After building his really scuffed portal, he manages to enter the nether at 4 minutes 30, which for this type of run is really good. As Ninja Brain enters the nether, he spawns in right next to a fortress, which most speedrunners would think that's really good, but it's really bad for this category since you can't take one bit of damage. He proceeds to E-Ray for a bastion and notices that there's one nearby. He has a little bit of a look around and notices that the bastion is right over the horizon. He navigates through the terrain really cautiously, hoping there's no stray blazers that can shoot him from behind. After climbing up a hill, he can recognize that the Bastion is a stables type. He sees that he has a double triple chest, so he decides to play top down double triple chest route. This route allows him to get 8 gold blocks and a ton of piglins to trade with. After setting up his trading spot really carefully, he goes up to the top to loot the chests, where he finds a little bit more gold and some obsidian. He goes back down to collect his trades where he has 16 pearls, 2 fire resistance potions, enough string for 3 beds, and enough resources for a few respawn angers. After collecting all the trades he needs, he manages to leave the bastion at 7 minutes flat. Because the terrain he has is a little bit hilly, he has to place a few strategic blocks so he doesn't take any damage. After a little bit of travelling back to the fortress, he manages to enter the fortress at 7 minutes and 40 seconds. He has to enter through the bad part of the fortress, but it doesn't take long for him to navigate his way back to the good part. He finds a stray blaze along the way and manages to get one rod from killing it. After almost getting shot by a skeleton, he has to dig down into the pillar of the fortress and hide there so he can kill the skeleton and make his way back out. After coming across an army of skeletons, he has to make his way around them and manages to navigate his way to the blaze spawner without getting hit once. 
He blocks off all access to the spawner so no skeletons or any mobs at all can shoot him down. After killing a few blazes, he gets some slightly above average blaze drops, getting 7 blaze rods for 12 kills. He builds a portal back to the overworld and does a distance check, so he can do calculated travel. Calculated travel is where you work out the distance of you and the stronghold so you can determine how far you are from the stronghold. After doing his distance estimate, he travels back through to the nether and goes to some good blind travel cords where he thinks the stronghold will be closest to. Now normally I like to split runs into four major sections, the overworld, the nether, the post nether and the end. But this run really doesn't have much of a post nether, so I'll just let you see what happens here. What you just witnessed was one of the greatest blind travels in history, getting an I Spy blind travel into the portal room. Even without this kind of blind, this was still an easy world record pace, blinding at 14 minutes. That's just showing how crazy this run was, going from so fast and just getting that extra luck to blind into the portal room. After this, he travels into full focus mode, setting up the one cycle, making sure not to take any damage, hence why this setup is really awkward. He proceeds to do east-west dragon perch, waiting about 30 seconds for the dragon to perch. Then the dragon snaps, goes to the center to perch, and ninja brain is right on it. Now I'm gonna let you watch the one cycle and his reaction for yourself. Let's fucking go, man. First world record, and it's by five plus minutes. Oh my god. So yeah, you can see his reaction was pretty insane. With all the pressure he had, pulling off a three bed one anchor one cycle is absolutely crazy. And the only way he pulled that off is with the golden apple he got at the start of the run. He needed this because every explosive does half a heart of damage during the one cycle. Overall, this run was insane and I hope you enjoyed my analysis. If you haven't already subscribed to him, make sure you subscribe to Ninja Brain. The link will be in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching everyone and I hope I see you in the next video. Goodbye everyone.